Welcome to the December 2023 LAPPG meeting. We have Esteban Toro with us. We're going to be inspired and maybe AI won't be so scary after this. Esteban is a senior creative evangelist for Adobe where he brings his passion for storytelling to the world of film, connecting with filmmakers and helping them bring their visions to life. Esteban is also quite an accomplished travel photographer. Uh, for Esteban, photography and filmmaking are more than just a profession, it's a way of life. Through his lens, he invites us to see the world in a new light, appreciate its beauty and diversity, and understand the common threads that unite us all. He is a master of his craft, a true artist and storyteller, and his legacy will inspire generations to come. I have to say, I love that. I didn't, that was written, I didn't touch it because it's so true. If any of you have seen Esteban's work, it is absolutely breathtaking. And I, I was so excited when, I think, it, I don't know if it was LinkedIn on one of them, maybe it was Instagram, but it popped up that that he has a new book. So Esteban, I, I'm i so excited. I know it's a limited a limited amount for the books. They're not that many yet, but can you tell us a little bit about this amazing work of art? <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. Hello, Wendy. Hello, everyone. I'm super excited to be here with you all. Um, yeah, we, we've been planning this, this webinar for the longest time, so I'm so, so happy to be here. Um, yeah, the book, I actually have it here. Thank you for, for the shout out to the book. Basically, it's a photography book that I produce since the past, I don't know, I would say for the past seven, eight years. And I was ed I started editing this book back in 2020. Uh, I really decided to take the time and just to you know like calmly decide each image that will be there, the stories, and I mix my you know like I mix the photographs with an illustrator who actually builds some uh, images as well, some illustrations uh, based on my photography work, and you know like yeah, that's basically uh, how this book came to life. Uh, as you said, right now it's a limited edition. Hopefully. Things will change in the future, uh, but yeah. So that's that's a little bit about it. So hello, everyone. Awesome. Well, I'm going to turn it over to you, but do let us know when it is uh, available for the wide audience because I will let our group know. Um, it's 700 and some pages, right? So I mean, it's pretty comprehensive and and beautiful. So I'm going to let you go, and thank you so much for being here. I want to show you a little bit about my work so you get familiar with what I do and then we will jump directly into the software. All right, so this is a little bit about my work and what I do, just for you to get familiar with it. Um, so today we're going to be talking about AI. I know it's the topic of the year probably, and many of you have multiple questions. I love to take questions, uh, so we will like more than happy to respond to anyone, any question that you will have. Uh, feel free to, you know, like chime in and, and go in the chat. And thank you, Jennifer, for your words regarding uh, my work. So we have introduced quite a few things this year using AI uh, at Adobe. Maybe you have heard about Firefly. Maybe you heard some things about Photoshop. We have included some things in Illustrator. But I wanted to 
really focus our attention today in the things that you know are related to us video editors filmmakers and that is premiere pro and um after effects so i'm gonna start sharing uh, about text-based editing i think this is maybe our flagship for the year i will be sharing again my screen you will be able to see it in a second and this is my premiere pro so what is text-based editing Many of you, I'm sure you can you can tell me in the chat, have been in this situation where you you are editing an interview or you're editing something that has some you know like audio and you end up like listening to the person again and again and again just to get the perfect you know like part that you want. So we have been there as well. Um, so we created a new feature, a new panel in the in in the in the uh, app that is called text face editing so how do you find it there are multiple ways i'm going to show you how you can even introduce um videos into the, into your into your project to create that text based editing project so the first thing i'm just going to hit new project over here i'm going to i already kind of preset this i'm going to choose a location where i want my project to live i'm going to go to my desktop and i'm going to create la ppg and I'm just gonna place my project somewhere here. Now, I'm gonna go wherever my footage is. In this case, I have a folder here in my desktop that is called demos and then 2024. And I have here some interviews uh, that we were filming a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this hasn't been released, so it's gonna come out soon. But I think I figured it will be a great footage for uh, this presentation. So I'm going to select these two clips. These are two interviews. Uh, it, it was like an hour interview. Basically what I did, I just cut it into 10 minutes each one. And then I just did some basic color, uh, color grading. And just for you to know, this is Cam A and Cam B. And I have this new module over here. So basically what you will see is automatic transcription. I can toggle it on or off. I will keep it on. I have... English here as the main language, but I have 18 different languages and we're including more. And then you can decide whether you want to separate the speakers in case that you have multiple people talking at the same time during the interview, including the, you know, like the filmmaker and the interviewer. And then you can decide whether you want to transcribe only the clips that are in the sequence or all the clips that you import. I'm going to transcri transcribe only the clips that are in the sequence. So I'm just going to create it here and then <laughs> Premiere is going to open this for me. Okay, so now what is happening is that it brought it to like, you know, like my whole project and my sequence. I have, I'm going to erase this from here. Actually, I don't need this. I'm going to delete it from here. I have this new workspace that we included that is called text space editing. So if I click over here to text space editing, I will have a new panel that comes on the left side and then I can see that I have my two files. When I click on any of these files, what I will see is that like Adobe Sensei, that is basically our Adobe, our AI, you know, like motor, like gear, is basically processing all the information, is processing the whole interview, is auto-transcribing it and showing it to me here. So <laughs> probably many of you have already worked with this or maybe have seen it before if you attended NAB or if you attended IVC, we, we have been talking a lot about it, but I want to go on how it works and show you the details and some changes we have made. So the first thing that I like about text-based editing is that I can rename the speakers. So if I click just here and then I go to edit speaker name, I can rename myself. I know that this is Esteban. Uh, I know that the interviewer is the second person. And then I know that somewhere here is like the filmmaker. So I can just include that. And then it's just gonna automatically like change the name for all of them. So I can easily look through like the whole transcript. And then <laughs> I want you to listen to this uh, interview just for you to get a little bit of a sense of how this was shot. Yeah, my name is Esteban Toro. I am a travel and photographer filmmaker. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hi, my name is Esteban Toro. I am a travel photographer and filmmaker, and I also work for Adobe. Let's just do it. I'm very tired. No, we're talking big. That was a big truck. Yeah, yeah. So, of course, we might have to do that big time. So, okay. One more time. Yeah. Hi, my name is Esteban Toro. I am a travel photographer and filmmaker, and I work for Adobe. 
So I'm sure this has happened to you many times if you have recorded yourself or if you're editing interviews, um, repeating and repeating. And normally, you know, you will have to, well, I will wear my headphones and listen to it again and okay, cutting here, trimming here, bring it here. Not anymore. I can just easily like read through the whole thing and then I can be like, okay, this kind of work uh, because I can see that, you know, like after I kept talking, so basically what I can do now is I can just highlight this part and then I have two options. I can either come here and press this button that is called insert or I can press the letter comma in my keyboard. So just, you will see it here and it just bring it into my timeline. Now I can do, I can keep going so I can be like, okay, tell us a little bit about yourself. I can skip that where I was born, maybe that's not so interesting for me. Okay, I wanted to be a musician. Yes, I want that, so bring it here. And so I was playing bass guitar and doing stuff, great. And I will spend about six to eight hours, blah, 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 playing, okay, perfect. And I can bring all this here. And then I can choose something else. Uh, maybe, you know, like, and I remember, so I started my first class, okay, something like this with my camera and traveling stuff. Okay, perfect, something like that. And then immediately, I briefly just had a rough cut after that that I can edit. So let's listen to this. Hi, my name is Esteban Toro. I am a travel photographer and filmmaker, and I work for Adobe. I wanted to be a musician. So I was playing bass guitar. I had a band and we were composing and stuff. I was playing about six to eight hours every day just practicing with me. So it took me more than a minute because I was explaining how it works, but basically what I'm able to do is just take any interview, just scan through it, read through it, and if I know how to read, I can basically edit an interview now. And that's thanks to using one of our AI features. Um, we released this back in the spring uh, this year, and then we started, like, the first thing that we heard was like, oh, and can we you know, can we include like a search bar tool? So we included a search bar tool. Then, oh, can we do some some bulk replacing if we want to? And we were like, yeah, of course we can include that. So we started hearing multiple community requests. Like people were telling us, you know, we were showing this. I was personally going to different cities all over the country, uh, showing this, this new feature and people will give us feedback. Then we will provide this feedback back to the engineers and they actually made some changes. So for example, now you saw it maybe over here that it like the AI recognized my name as S.A. Montoro and that is not my name, just in case you didn't catch it up. Uh, so I can just go to the search bar tool and go like S.A. Montoro. And then after that, I can just hit here replace and I can ask this thing to just change it for Esteban Toro. And I can hit replace just for this word or replace all in case that there are more than one, you know, like wrong, uh, you know, like trans transcri transcription over here by the AI. And it's just doing it for me. So I can replace that. I can also look for pauses. So all these things over here are the ums, uh, uh, eh, all these little pauses that you can have and filler words and all these things, you can easily change them and you can also, you know, like super easily just select them and delete them all if that's what you want. So now like, <coughs> sorry, first we released like this new feature, then we heard what the community wanted and how they were using it. We have been, you know, like in consistent communication with top filmmakers and, and editors in the industry, listening how they're using it. And then we replace and included some new stuff for you. So basically what you have now with text-based editing is you can edit easily just by reading in a panel, and then you can also uh, replace bulk words and you know, like certain mistakes that the AI will not catch completely. We have also heard um, this in an ideal condition, and that's why I show you this interview. Uh, this catch catches the words perfectly, but I have noticed that, especially when there are strong accents such as mine, um, it will, you know, like miss one word of two, so you can always replace it over here using the bulk editing. Another thing <laughs> is that if you notice, I have a transcript panel while I'm on my main footage, right? While I'm working on this video over here. But what if I actually want to, um, once I edited and I made my rough cut, what if I want to change something that is in the timeline? So when I click in the timeline, immediately I can see that it changes 
and the transcription to whatever I included here. So let's say that the greeting part, the hi, my name is Esteban Toro. I don't want it at the very beginning, but I want it at the end. So I can just highlight it. And then, you know, this, this uh, shortcut, by the way, command X, and then I can go to the very end of the interview and command V and I can introduce it here. So now it will look something like this. I don't know if this makes sense. Just, you know, playing with the settings says, hi, my name is Esteban Toro. So I can easily play with every part of the cuts that I'm creating in my in my project just um, to, you know, just to play with it and, you know, play with whatever editing that I want to create. And that is text-based editing. <laughs> but before um, we jump into questions regarding this, I want to show you one more thing. Something really common that I heard is like, that is great. Can I do closed captions or subtitles? And the answer, my friends, is yes. So how do you do it? You just come here to create captions. You hit that button and then you will have like all the preferences, like everything that you want, you know, like how many characters you want. Like, okay, I want, you know, not so many characters. Maybe I want the style to, you know, like how, depending how the style I want, the formats I want. You can change, for example, if you want single line, double line, I personally prefer single line. And then I can just hit create captions and it's just gonna do it for me. So I immediately have everything. Hi, my name is Esteban Toro. There. I am a travel photographer and filmmaker and I work for Adobe. I want if I wanna, and before I jump into the questions, I know that some of you will ask, and can I change the font? Because I don't know why we at Adobe choose that font to be the default one. I, I don't think it's my favorite. So you can just highlight it, go to Essential Graphics. If you, if you don't know how to open it, you can always go to Window and then go to Essential Graphics over here, open it there, and then you can change, you know, for whatever font you want. Uh, let's say that I want, I don't know, I'm going to do something that will make no sense. So don't judge me. I'm editing live and this is, this makes me a little bit nervous, but you can see it here. I'm going to make it even uglier just by making it like, I don't know, super green because whatever. So there you go. I can change everything that I want just by doing a couple of clicks. Um, I want to see if we have some questions uh, in the meantime regarding this. Okay, yes, we do. Um, from Emily Owens, uh, can you sync the BCAM to the text-based rough cut easily? Yes, you could. If you bring the BCAM into like into the timeline and then synchronize it. But if you want to do multicam, and this is a really common question, just create the multicam first. Like you have the A and B cam, and then right click, like select the two files. Multi, uh, create multicam sequence and then you will have a multicam sequence and then you can just use the same transcript panel and even decide how to edit simultaneously. So cam A, cam B in this part and as you will normally work with multicam, it works with the text based editing. So I would rather that do that at the beginning than then just trying to synchronize the VCAM. So yes, you can do either way. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. I think we're ready for the next one. Cool. So. Another one that we have is, um, so we released this year um, one feature that was called, or it's called Adobe Podcast. And let me actually, I'm going to share my screen over here with you. Okay, so I'm going to show you podcast.adobe.com. So if you go over here and you log with your account, I'm um, log it out, you can see. Um, you can see that Everything that I have, like everything that is here, is based for any audio track that you, you can create. So you can check your microphones. If you're running a podcast, you can use this option that is enhanced speech. And then you have like another option that is a studio. Every, all of this is using AI, is web-based and is accessible by, you know, if you have any Creative Cloud membership, you will be able to access this. So we released, like we noticed that people were using a lot like enhanced speech to clean some audio tracks because it was doing a really good job. So because we heard this from you guys, uh, we decided to include it this year um, in the beta. So if I go to Premiere Pro, uh, to the beta that all of you can access, uh, let me just make sure that I'm on the beta right now. Uh, okay, this is, this is my After Effects. Hold on, I'm closing everything here. Uh, okay, here it should be my beta. Oh, where's my beta? Here is my beta. So if I open my beta, um, <laughs> let me show you how you can access the beta in case that you don't know how to do it. 
Uh, you just go to your Creative Cloud uh, app over here, and then you just go to Beta Apps, and you immediately will have access to Premiere Pro Beta. If you download it, it will be there. Um, you open your interview. So in this case, um, uh, this is the project that I'm working on, on the other Premiere Pro, on the original build. And I bring this over here. I have it, you know, like I have my full, let's actually, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna bring just a part of it to make things a little bit quicker. Uh, I'm just gonna bring, let's say, da, 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 this is that. Okay, I'm good. Oh, so I am Esteban, travel photographer. Okay, I'm gonna bring this to my timeline. Or actually, you know what? Let's bring it all. Let's bring or yeah, let's bring the whole the whole thing. Let me just bring a little bit more. I'm gonna, I want to bring just a little bit more. All right. So there you go. I bring this part of my interview, and then if I have by any reason a really not clean audio, this was recorded, you know, we had a sound person, there was, you know, like a sound location there, and we had a good microphone and stuff, so it sounds really clear. Like Columbia, um, and there I was... Uh... But I intentionally uh, had saved a file directly coming from the camera, because that can happen, you know, like things happen while you're in set, and if something goes wrong with the audio, if there is, and by the way, I don't know if you hear it now, but in New York City, with all the noise that you can get, it was hard to get the interview because uh, I had to repeat multiple times because of, you know, sirens and stuff. So I can, I just have this file uh, for you to compare. That's the file that I wanted to bring over here. And if I have this camera audio, be prepared, prepare your ears. This is going to sound awful. So I bring it here. I'm just gonna bring, you know, like the first part. I wanna cut, let's say I wanna cut this part for you. I just wanna get your sense of it. So this is how it sounds now. Let's listen to it. Hi, my name is Esteban Toro. I'm a travel photographer and filmmaker, and I also work. It's not ideal, it's not bad. This is the sound directly from the camera. If I go to my essential sound panel, and I, that you can find here again, like window, essential sound, and then I tag this as a dialogue, I, I will find this new option over here that is called enhance, enhance speech. So if I click it here, immediately what's gonna happen is that AI is gonna start processing, it's gonna start recalculating the whole voice. This is not like EQing the whole thing, this is like regenerating the voice. And if you're anxious like me, you can see the progress of how it's how fast it's taking, you know, for this to process it. And also you have it here. This was another um, community request. And then basically what is happening right now is taking all that information and creating a new track, a new sound audio track that I want you to hear right now. Hi, my name is Esteban. I am a travel photographer and filmmaker, and I also work for the Wii. If it sounds like uh, 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 as it's sounding now, I can always go back and pull it back, and I don't need to reprocess it and listen to it again. Esteban, I am a travel photographer and filmmaker, and I also work for the Wii. So I want you to feel, you know, like how it is before and after. Um, but basically it's cleaning the audio to a point that is actually usable. And that is the point of enhanced speech. You can, if you run into any issue, if you have like footage that was really old and you know, you need to bring it into your documentary or something happened with the audio in the field, or you actually had really cool audio, but you just want, you know, like there was a siren or something, you can easily clean it. So. I remember during this interview, we, as I was saying, like we had some, you know, sirens around and I remember the filmmaker was like, ah, I'm a little bit concerned. And I was like, Hey, don't worry. We got this because we can, you know, like if we have a really good quality audio, we can clean it after. Um, so that's something that you have right now. You can experiment. You can use it with different files here in Premiere Pro and it's called Enhanced Speech. Just remember that it's in the beta at the moment. Hopefully, hopefully we'll release it soon. Uh, questions on Adobe Podcast Enhance? Will this be an audio filter too, is the question from Jason Harder, that we can add as an effect? No, this is basically like a, like a new feature that you have in, in the Essential Sound Panel that you can use to enhance your audio. It's not going to be like a, a filter or an effect. Uh, and we don't have it in Audition, just if you're wondering also if you use Adobe Audition. So it's going to be like a separate feature. 
uh, that you can use anytime during your editing process. We have another question. Enhance and loudness are both okay to use at the same time? You can use the same. Uh, normally, I have discovered that using enhanced speech is just for cleaning certain things. And then if I want to play with the loudness, I'm going to show you another thing related to audio. Um, you know what? Let's actually do it now. So you will see it. Uh, While you're getting that ready, we, we do have two other ones that came. Do you want me to keep going with questions? Yeah, please, please, please. Um, while I prepare here the footage that I want to show you. Perfect. So the first one is, would this violate any new rules with SAG after using AI? No, it's not. It's absolutely not. So everything that we're training is trained on material that we have the copyright of. So it's all like we have put a lot of effort, especially if, if you want to see it from that perspective, like Adobe has taken time to really be conscious about how we're training our AI models to make sure that is basically commercially safe. So, yeah. Got it. And I, I do appreciate that. And uh, Lara, a good friend of our, our group, is asking, will you be able to create stereo mix or change the camera mix? Um, you could be able to create stereo mix. Uh, but honestly, I will say, like, there's, I mean, you can use this, this feature up to a certain degree. I feel that if you want to go like really specialized, I will go definitely in audition and start working there. If you want to do like more like audio mixing, and of course there are you know different tools, Pro Tools, other other software as well that you can use to do like a more you know like a deeper work on the audio. Um, Understood. This is something that I will use normally, you know, in a in a project like I don't know, I have to do an interview or I don't know, you know, like a soundbite for something that I'm promoting. I record myself in New York City. It's noisy. I clean it here. That's what I, that's the use I will, you know, that's why I will use this, this feature in, in Premiere Pro. Of course, that's my personal use. You can use it however you feel that, that it will help you. One more about this one. It says it doesn't sound like we can train this audio tool. Is that correct? Yeah, we, you cannot train it yourself. It's all trained based on like our own models, uh, but but by the way, it's local on your computer. So anything that you're putting there, we are not training on that. So you can feel completely confident that like all the information, like whatever interview you're putting there, we're not training based on that. We have our own model that we train, and then this goes locally into your computer. Got it. Okay, I'm gonna let you keep going and we'll hold on to some of these questions. Sure, I wanna show you one more with audio that this is one of my favorites and you know it's super mind-blowing let's say that this is my you know like my whole interview i don't know i have this sound bite for 26 seconds and i need the music to be part of it i need the audio to be in there but then you know like i will normally have to trim the audio and trying to introduce some fade out and you know try to do some stuff like that but we have another feature that many people are not aware of so if you go here to the ripple edit tool and you just keep press like uh, clicking and then you go to remix tool over here and then you zoom out over here and you go back and you select this track and i just slide it back all the way back basically what it's doing is ai is analyzing the clip right now and it's understanding how to do the best cuts and it goes like this you can see all the cuts that it's doing and it's going to go like this I mean. Sorry about that. Let me just show you. Let me stop this so it will make sense. Music. Okay. Okay. Let me bring it down a little bit. I was Not so. About. Let me just do it like this. Six to eight hours every day of practicing with my things to God. Waking and waking and waking. And then one day I was having a conversation with a person and, and I'm very well mentioned something about photography. So basically what it's doing right now is deciding, the AI is deciding the whole length of the, of the soundtrack, how to like shrink it down in this case, but I can also extend it. So if by any reason I have the same track and I have like a super long interview, uh, you know, like let me actually just bring the whole thing to my track, to my, pro, to my um, project over here. So I'm just gonna bring the whole thing, the 10 minutes, and I just put it here, and then I need the music 
now it's not long enough. So what I can do is use exactly the same tool, Remix tool, that's how it's called, Remix tool, and you find it just clicking here, and then I can just do the other way around and it's just extending it. So again, it's just gonna create another version of the song that is gonna be like seamlessly adapting to whatever you're producing. So let me just bring it a little bit here. So as you can see, it's basically making sure that the music is consistent and it's just making sure that you can have whatever track audio adapted to whatever project you're working on. I have used this in the past for music. I use this feature a lot and I have also used it for um, any ambient sound. So if I, you know, like sometimes I got like just a minute of a room tone and then I need to extend it a little bit longer, I can easily do it. Um, so this is something that you can use and it's been there for a while uh, using AI. Um, this is really cool. Uh, I love this feature as well, using AI. I'm going, I'm going to use my same project, even though that it has nothing to do with it. I'm just gonna erase everything that I have here. I show you my trailer that I, you know, that I, my reel that I love to show. Uh, sometimes I have been asked like, if I can replace one frame or two, you know, like one scene or another. So usually, you know, it's kind of pretty annoying just to have to, you know, go and frame by frame looking and then cutting and stuff. Well, now something that I can do really, really easily is once I have this over here, my clip over here, I can scroll down and let me just find the option for you. Uh, scene edit detection. If I hit click here, basically what it's gonna do is gonna read my whole um, trailer that you saw that is like, you know, multiple images over another to make like, you know, like this really like, powerful, you know, and vibrant like movement for a trailer. And I can decide if I want to apply a cut for each cutting point, if I want to create a bin with from each detected point, and then if I want to add a clip marker. In this case, I'm just going to use the sub clip bin and I'm just going to create one bin for point. Then it's going to analyze it. And as you will see, basically again, using AI, what is happening right now is that it's the uh, Adobe Premiere is reading the whole, tr the whole clip, the whole clip, the whole clip, and then it's just breaking it into pieces for me. So I can easily go and be like, oh, so you don't want the, you don't want this one? Easy. So I can just remove it here and find something else and replace it and done. But also if I, let's say, you know, like I wanna just have like whatever folders or whatever clips, I have everything cut into pieces for me and organized in a bin uh, automatically and I didn't have to do much. So if, you're, if you ever have to do this, maybe you have to do it now and then. Um, again, super easy, you just click on, on, the, on the track uh, when it's in the timeline and then you go to scene edit detection and it's just gonna do it for you just right here this is the one that will cut it into um, little chunks and let me show you another one that i like hopefully this is i mean let me see let me see what can we use let's try with this one with the same interview that i've been using um yeah let me bring it like the first rough cut over here if I already cut this interview over here and then I decide, you know, like, oh yeah, cool Esteban, that's a ni nice cut, but I also want it for social media. So I also need it for social media. What can I do? Well, really easy, I go to my sequence over here, then right click, and then I can go and select auto reframe sequence. So if I click auto reframe sequence, again, AI, what's gonna do is gonna ask me, what do I want? A square, vertical, 916, 16, 9, whatever I want or custom. And then if I want to nest the clips or not to nest the clips, in this case, I'm not gonna nest the clips. And then I'm going to create it. And basically what's gonna do is AI is gonna try to track and you can see how it's tracking. I'm glad that it did it perfectly in this case. And it's gonna track whatever is happening and making sure that it gets attention. So, hi, my name is Esteban Toro. I am a travel photographer and filmmaker, and I work for Adobe. I want it to be an Easily, just with one click, I can have the vertical version for social media or anything vertical that I want. And then I can also have um, the horizontal one that I think is really cool. This 
I can tell you, in 90% of the cases works really good. In some other cases, as the docking one was like, oh, sometimes you have to, you know, tweak a, you know, a thing here and there, but it's gonna just facilitate and speed up your work so much better. Now, this is something really cool that it's how you can connect like multiple software in your, you know, like in your workflow. Uh, this year we release a generative fill in Photoshop that basically helps you to, you know, like feel and create like basically what it's doing is using AI, it's interpreting your images and creating something else out of it. What majority of people don't know or has no idea is that you can also do it for video. So this is where I find it like absolutely fascinating for filmmakers. Hopefully my computer is not gonna explode. Uh, come on, Photoshop. Yeah, cool. And then what I will do normally is just bring my track. So let's say I just bring this interview over here. I'm just gonna drag it into, into Photoshop. Then it's gonna read a video format. I don't need this right now. And then I will have these tracks over here. What for I want to bring my video into Photoshop? Well, easy. Let's say that I have this format over here, but what if I want to extend it by some reason? What if I need, you know, like a little bit more like widescreen on this side and a little bit more widescreen on this side? So what I'm going to do is basically go into my tracks. By now, don't do anything. And then I'm going to add a new video group just over here. I'm going to click there. It's going to create basically, it's called video groups in uh, Photoshop, but it's basically a video track. And then I'm going to go to um, a cut, the, the cutting option, the crop tool, and I'm just, that I just use the, the shortcut C. I'm going to extend it on one side. I'm going to extend it on the other side. And as I am extending it, I just, I leave this this um, prompt blank. So I just leave it empty, generate, and basically what AI is gonna do is gonna interpret whatever is happening in the video, whatever is happening on the edges, and it's just gonna create an image for me. It's gonna also give me three options, three variation options that you can see here on this side. It's loading, it's loading, I never know what to say, and boom, you have it. I just immediately with, you know, like a couple of clicks, extended, uh, you know, the sides of my, my interview, and I always have three options. Uh, usually I like one, <laughs> but if you want more, you can always generate more. And if you want to introduce a prompt, you can also do it. But I actually love how this is looking, you know, like look at the details of the plant. And yes, this is a video. So you can play it right now, uh, hopefully. Uh, yeah, continue the videos. I don't, I don't need this right now. And I'm just going to play it. So you can see that I have the whole track. Um, just to play and what if I want to bring something else? What if I want, you know, like this is kind of empty here So what if I actually want to, you know, like generate something here? So I'm just gonna make a, you know, a really brief selection generative feel and then I'm going to introduce like a plant Let's see what it actually generates and in the meantime, I will take questions regarding this while we wait for this to load. What video formats, this is from Michael Thomas, what video formats can you bring into Photoshop for generative fill? So ideally, I have tried especially with MP4. So I will, you can try, it, it will be a nice experiment. Look, I'll be really honest. This is not Premiere Pro. So I will not bring a raw file from a red or you know, like a black magic, or I will not bring like an ARRI or a Sony FX3 raw file here uh, or Buran or, you know, I think it maybe it will kill your computer or maybe it will kill Photoshop. Maybe not. You can try. Um, I will normally do this when I just know that I need to extend a little bit or that I want to correct something. So, you know, if I wanted to spend some time, I could perfectly erase this, you know, like the frame of the windows and I could create something else. It's something that I will do kind of as the last part of my edit, even after I color it. Because, you know, like if you have to color after, maybe it's gonna look a little bit strange. So this will be like, you know, I have my final track, MP4, I bring it here and that's where I will edit it normally. Uh, I didn't like so much this plan, but let's generate another one. And if not, I will generate something else. And then you can, of course, export it and keep editing somewhere else. Can we round trip between Premiere and Photoshop? Unfortunately not. This is something okay. that I wish, let, let me let me reframe it this way. I, I like this plant and look at this. This is interesting. Like even the, you know, like the depth of field is kind of like really matching whatever is happening in the rest of the video. And I just want to point that. Um, let me ask you one question. Would you guys 
like to have this feature in Premiere Pro so you don't have to go back and forth, let me know in the chat. I will just put that question there. Can you show again how to access the video feature real quick? It's super easy. So the way you do it, again, I honestly didn't have to do much. I literally just dragged and dropped a video into Photoshop and it automatically brings uh, the timeline um, section over here that if you don't find it, I'm sure I just have my Zoom, you know, controllers on top. I cannot see it here, but I'm sure that if you go to window, there must be a timeline option and that will bring you a timeline for video. Again, you can do some, you know, like trimming and some cuts thing. This is not prof for professional video editors, but you can use it for this purpose and you can generate multiple things. I have seen people going super creative with this, changing the background and, you know, like running like sections of the video where the background is changing. You can select people. You can go really creative with uh, this feature. So just drag and drop into Photoshop, open Photoshop, drag and drop your video, and then you have it ready um, to edit and play with generative feel in Photoshop. Okay, so let's go to for scene edit detection. Can you export the individual clips? Used to be you couldn't, but maybe this has changed. Yes, you can 100% export like each one of the individual sections and you can do it and I think that's that's great. Great, and Andrew Gust is asking, is there a way to use the auto transcription to tag an existing script similar to Avid script sync, script based editing? That is a great feature request. Thank you so much. That That is great to have in the future. Okay. And um, this one is a, a good all-around question. It says, uh, this is from a uh, longtime member, Alan Connell. The AI features work so quickly. What computer are you working on? Does the AI take any special hardware? So this is funny enough, right now I'm working on a, a MacBook Pro connected to my screen. This is an M1. It's not even M2 or M3. So you guys can beat me on that computer. I'm sure you have even better computers. Uh, that's why I'm noticing like up to certain, you know, like level of like, I mean, like depending on the size of the video, it will perform really well. In other cases, I need to go with better machines. Uh, but this is the computer that I travel on the road all the time. So I like to have my files here you know, for demos and stuff. Um, so with M1s is working perfectly. I have also used some other windows such as Dell Precisions and HP, and it's running really, really smooth. We're basically optimizing both for Mac and Windows. So you guys should expect like really good performance on, you know, like on both iOS and, and different computers and setups. I think that's it. Um, my goodness, this was so amazingly interesting. I'm curious how, first of all, if people have questions, how do they get to you or what's the best yeah. way? Perfect. So let me share my screen for the last time, not this part, sure. but I want to show you just how we can be in touch. We can be in touch via Instagram. You can DM me anytime. I'm there for you guys. I read and respond to all my DMs. So feel free to, you know, shoot me a message. I'm also on Facebook. If you want to use Facebook and go there, Esteban Toro, just Google my name. LinkedIn uh, as well. We can connect there. Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. I also, like, I'm also regularly on Twitter. So if you guys are into, you know, like if you're in Twitter, also we can connect there. Just search my name. Um, I'm happy to take all your questions. And usually, like, I'm traveling all around basically the country. Sometimes we, we also do some trips in Europe um, to connect with you. So we organize, like, multiple events uh, where you can, you know, guys meet and ask me questions and... I can introduce you to the right people to, you know, connect and give us some feature requests and feedback. And, you know, we will love you to be part of it. That's, we want to grow the community. So I'm here for you. Thank you so much, Esteban. We are big Adobe fans here at LAPPG. A big thank you to you, a big thank you to them. And make sure you go to our YouTube channel. We have over 90 presentations waiting for you. Uh, just go to um, youtube.com slash C slash Los Angeles Post Production Group and you will find it. And be sure to connect with us. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, X, and LinkedIn. Use the hashtag LAPPG. 
And a big thank you to our partners. At the platinum level, we have AJA, and at the gold level, Adobe, Blackmagic Design, OWC, Zeiss, Frame.io. At the silver level, Isotope by Native Instruments, SGO, EditShare, and Avid and a whole lot of other companies that are supporting media and community partners of ours. We thank them all for their support. It really does take a village. And just a, a heartfelt wish for a wonderful end of the year to everyone. Um, I hope you have a safe uh, holiday season and we look forward to seeing you guys back in 2024.